Happy holidays, everyone. Welcome to, well, I guess we can call it an annual video that we do every year. For the past three years, I, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, but without further ado, it's that time of year. I am Lightning. I'm Alice. And this is Lightless Plays, who, let's be fair, we have been kind of off and on this year. Uh, so we've got a lot of things to go over, but... Uh, yeah, for those who are just tuning in and have never seen one of these videos before, this is normally the video in which we review the year in terms of games, our content, and our plans for the year, and the games we're looking for, 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 forward to in the year to come. But overall, let's just get a, gen a general consensus of the year. It's where things got a little bit less crappy. <laughs> let's put it that way, in every facet of the universe, because, um... 2020 wasn't a great year for games, it was a great year for game announcements, but not really substantial, at least in my humble opinion. Uh, 2021, as with, as with, well, again, the same goes for the year in general, we got better games that came out this year. The ongoing global, uh, uh, bastard as we call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's still hampering a few, a few games that we are looking forward to, but nonetheless. Cut things short. We hope everyone is safe and have having a happy holiday, whatever you, whatever you celebrate. And so let's get on with the video. So the games that uh, came out this year was was pretty substantial in some ways, and we got a few good games out of it. But before we go in into it, we'll start off nice and easy, and we'll and we'll talk about the things in which we have been up to regarding our channel. So, let's kick things off with what we have been up to. And, of course, we uh, we got to start off with the big headliner. Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected. Yeah. We waited for a long time for the, for the uh, definitive edition to come out in general. And most of our year of, of 2020 was happily spent playing that game again. And just going over the details. And just having just a nice reminisce. And just seeing what they changed and what they improved. And I gotta say, I still stand by it. The Definitive Edition, it's no lie. Get it, buy it, trust me, you will thoroughly enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Now, let us go on to Fuge Connected in its consensus. For me, I still stand by it. It is a nice, short, albeit a bit of sweet piece of content but it was for it was fairly enjoyable with its music its characters again which is a strong point and an environment for what it's worth what is pretty substantial in the grand scheme of things mm -hmm. uh, the only, only real real negative thing i could say about that game is in the area of its antagonists it is it either didn't give an antagonist enough time to really shine or didn't give enough in-depth detail about it Fog King, the Fog King especially. Yeah, going through the Xenoblade subreddit, they all agree with, with that consensus. Yeah, and again, a controversial change of taking out a chain attack and putting in something else, uh, but again, that's my that's my two cents in the game. Um, but now, with the content in which we did on it, honestly, I was happy with the way it came out. Mm -hmm. It was nice, simplistic, albeit if we were more informed about going into that and knowing we had to get um, uh, the uh, Pond Spectres in a better order. Yeah. Because I will say, for those who haven't watched our video, or videos, I, I, I should say, we had a rough time because we didn't get the Pond Spectre chain in attack until the very end of the game because we had such bad luck in getting the wrong pond specters we kept on getting yellow and blue but never got one single red to make the chain attack work yeah but apart from that just like the content itself it was nice simplistic and i honestly had a lot of fun mm -hmm. playing xenoblade in general and i just loved just <laughs> voice acting the pond specters i feel like I feel like it's one of the highlights for me. <laughs> it, it, it was very fun. And now going on, we do have something else to talk about regarding our content on YouTube, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that to the very end of uh, the video. And it kind of ties into something which we are going to be doing in the future for our content. So 
if you are interested in uh, in seeing what I'll just say on that if you want a timestamp in the video one will be here so so just hold on that one but with YouTube temporarily out of the way let's talk let's talk about twitch mm -hmm. and honestly twitch especially in this year I feel like it's become a really fun thing for us uh, to do. Yeah. Yeah. 2020 especially was when we re when we really started to get in into Twitch, but this year I feel like we found a good foundation in what content we want to do. Mhm. Mm um but hey, if you haven't uh, signed or f or followed us on Twitch, hey. Hey, like this place on Twitch. Just give it's giving a bit of a promotion on that one uh, but yeah the content which we're do, uh, doing on Twitch I want to do more of whether it's game anniversaries whether it's dedicated completion or playthrough streams you know your uh, your casual affair but one of the things which we've been doing recently is a series in which we're calling demo reel and the idea behind it is is as a kid I remember getting game magazines and you just get those CDs that have those game demos on them with the discs including you know what the one that came packaged in with the PS2 and whatnot mm -hmm. and it just makes you harken back to the days in which you can play play a bite-sized version of the game and you can get a real sense of it I feel like demos in this day and age, are kind, are kind of, a kind of a lost art. Yeah, because I can remember renting from Blockbusters or Hastings and just enjoying the game for a few days. Yeah, yeah, sure. And that's what demos were before actual demos became into uh, production, because it gave just a bite-sized bit of the game. Now, and I don't get me wrong, demos are still widely available, but it's just not as prevalent as what they were, and. Honestly, that series for us, it just gives it just gives a taste on what on what a demo can do and how important de demos are to uh, the uh, consumers, as as well as it can be a bit of practice for the developers mm -hmm. because if they can release a demo, they can get feedback, you know, and so on and so forth. But let's just give a fine example of demos it would be played. And we can definitely safely assume that yes, I want to get Metroid Dread because that demo sold us on, on that game. Uh huh. Uh, the World Ends Club. No. That demo was terrible. The game <laughs> is terrible. The story is ter is, is terrible. Don't buy it because we sure didn't. And just so on and so forth we have also had uh, good games like the world ends with you neo as well as Mon monster hunter stories and we just get to chat with you guys and you know what that's a fun time Respect yeah i think that's my one of my favorite things about streaming is like live stream chatting compared to like youtube where all the comments come afterwards and you type to them it's like that doesn't feel as fulfilling as live responses i guess yeah and the best part about that is, for me, seeing how we're covering so many games, we get a chance to meet, meet, meet new people and interact with them and say, Hey, you know what? You like this game. Well, I like this, I like this game as well. well. Oh, guess what? Me too. It starts a con It starts a, a topic and a conversation piece. Yeah, we have. We met a couple friends that way. Mm-hmm. And speaking of which... That's a nice transition to our next point. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of meeting friends and doing things with them on Twitch, one of my personal highlights is is the series in which we're doing on Pokemon Platinum. We are doing a Pokemon Platinum Soul Link Nuzlocke with our friend from, uh, from Twitch, Nexus. And yeah, it had to be put on hold because of scheduling issues and timing issues and grinding. But man, I've had a lot of fun. There's been some ups and downs between uh, uh, between uh, the two of us. Okay, so for okay, so in in place of Tur oh God. of Tur uh, Twig, I have Chatot. Chatot, really? All right, <laughs> interesting. Not the best one. Um, in place of Chimchar, 
Rosary, that's that's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, it'll make maybe it will help make it make the uh, first gym a lot easier. It'll yeah, but say make quick work of yeah. uh, beginning game. And in place of Piplup, we have. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> What? <laughs> we got a horse! Oh, God. This... <laughs> My... I think I know which one you're picking already. Uh, oh, I'm gonna go for chat art! Absolutely! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for anyone whose ears I just blew out. <laughs> and even though we haven't really, really talked as much as we do, Nexus, if, if you are watching, dude, it's been a blast. To play that game with you and I hope you are, are doing well and I really look forward to chatting with you again when we have the time and just it's getting back to the game and, and I hope you have a good happy new year as well definitely and hey 2022 I'd love to do more games with you whether it's more Pokemon or just anything dude so if you want to chat hey I'm here I mean, I wasn't a part of that project, but even I still had fun playing my own thing and listening to the background shenanigans. Uh -huh. Like when Nexus lost his save data and just all hell broke loose. Yes. That felt so bad. Yep. <laughs> Pokemon have died and save files have died, let's put it that way. <laughs> so So it's been it's been it's been a roller coaster of a ride, but one I I dev I definitely love to go back to. Other things which we've done have been game anniversaries, whether it's been a significant game for the generation or for us, we've, we've just thoroughly enjoyed it. Like, uh, like playing Sonic Unleashed or anything else, or, or, or anything else like that. There are a few games next year that do have their 20th anniversary or 10th anniversary and my god, I'm kind of looking forward to play, playing them should, should the time allow. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, the typical streams in which we normally do are randomized streams in which, as it says, we play games that randomly come upon the wheel of misfortune <laughs> and we play them for a, a, a significant amount of time before or we uh, switch over. And if you're watching this on the day it comes out, we will be doing another one of those streams tomorrow, aka the 30th of December 20, uh, 2021. Plug, 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 Twitch channel, Twitch channel. But yeah, hope to see you there and hope you guys are doing okay. And we'd love to, I'd love to hang out with you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, so now, with that said, this has been the present. Let's look to the future. And by that, I mean let's look forward to the games in which are coming out next year. And our most anticipated ones that isn't Elden Ring. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, haven't heard enough hype about that game yet. Not bitter at all, but hey, that's my personal preference. So now, let's kick off with the games in which we need to know coming out next year and have a certified release date. First one up is Pokemon Legends Arceus, the pseudo Breath of the Wild game that's not actually Breath of the Wild, but the semi open world Pokemon game that takes place in Diamond and Pearl's past world, in which case I'm all about that. Mm -hmm. It's free roam. It may still be a little bit of a time based combat, but hey, it's a new Pokemon game. The environments look okay for the graphics that they're, de that they're dealing with. And just, it's it, it's a new spin on Pokemon. You know what? I'd love to I'd play that. Even I'm looking forward to it, and I'm not wholly crazy on the Pokemon games. The one thing that, the one rule that I think is true of, of Pokemon is whenever they try and divert from the no, uh, the normal formula, it actually turns out quite uh, quite well. You just got to look at po uh, uh, Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Rangers, and especially Pokemon Colosseum and Pokemon XD. When, when they branch off and do their own thing, it's significant and you remember it. Case in point, a new Pokemon Snap game came out and pretty much everyone likes it. Mm -hmm. we, and, or, and also that, that, that is a game which I, I, I still need to play. <laughs> so, hey ho. And that concludes the games in which we know about the release dates for. Did you want to do a stream of that game or a let's play? I feel like it's better for a stream. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because 
Given it's get a, I don't feel, I don't feel like it works. We could probably do a compilation of the best moments of that, hmm. perhaps, but who knows. But still though, that is all the games which we know that do have a release date. So now let's get on to the games that may or may not come out next year, but hopefully will. And so, signing off, let's go on, we are gonna go, I think, uh, yeah, sure. Let's just go alphabetical here. Mm -hmm. First one up is Bayonetta 3. Not long since been an announced, and it's again the tr uh, the third game in in the Bayonetta series. I personally like it. I love hack and slash games, especially in the vein of Devil May Cry and Bayonetta and yada yada. Oh no, it's like Dynasty Warriors. I just can't get enough of that. Just a like really in depth con. A combat, <laughs> and also I'm looking forward to seeing all of all of all of the Easter eggs, the music, and the great comedy that comes from the game. Because Bayonetta, for those who don't know, it's very tongue in cheek. You kind of have to roll your eyes at some things, but you can't help you can't help but laugh as well. Mm -hmm. It's like having that great friend who throws in a few um, innuendos from time to time. You just have to roll your eyes sometimes. And I think it's fair to say, I'm saying this to my wife right now, uh, I want you to play both Bayonetta's before this comes out so you can get your consensus and if you actually want to do a bit of work on it. Mm -hmm. But do you have anything else to bring up about the content which we've done or anything that's coming up? Mm -mm. You sure? Mm -hmm. Alright. I just want to get your two cents in there. And if you do have any thoughts, Please chime in, mm -hmm. because otherwise it's very lonely, just uh, just having me talk. Because <laughs> I don't want to be alone on the mic here. <laughs> Next one up, it's an in the, the game I called Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. Uh, cyberfunk. A uh, cyberfunk. Sorry. God, <laughs> God damn you, Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> God damn bastards. But anyway, though. Yep, it's in the game made by Team Reptile, and one of the most noble things about this is that it's it's very much in the vein and spiritual successor to Jet Set Radio Future, which ironically it's hopefully coming out next year. And the most beautiful thing about it coming out next year is that it'll be Jet Set Radio's 20th anniversary, aka 20 years since we have got hide or hair of anything Jet Set Radio related. <laughs> which is kind of sad. Yeah. But one of the things that I am looking forward to, and let's face it, the main reason why a lot of people are looking forward to this game is because is because of the composer behind it. A.K.A. Hideki Naganuma. The, the Peter Griffin man. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. If you haven't seen Hideki Naganuma's Twitter, go take a look. <laughs> it's weird. He's a weird man, but my god, he makes some funky beats. <laughs> yeah, just don't ask him about ladies. That's all I'll say that. <laughs> I'm really getting awkward here. Let's move on really quick before I talk about his Twitter and talk, and talk, and talk about Family Guy funny moments. <laughs> Next one is Grand Blue Fantasy Reeling. This is a game that people either I haven't seen a lot of people think uh, talk about. In fact, in some websites I've seen, it doesn't even have it up in games that will come out next year. Even though in its trailers, it says it says this is coming out 2022. Now, just to give a little bit of premise of Grand Blue Fantasy. It's been a franchise that's been around for a, a, for a long time, almost to the point in which I'd say it's the same time as Star Ocean, but I could be wrong. But to give a brief, a brief premise on, on the game's development itself, it's had a lot of people's hands hands in it. Of course, side games, you know, it's, it's normal people, but in its history, especially in its audio design, it's had people from Final Fantasy and even people from Xenoblade Chronicles working on the soundtrack. This particular one um, has Nobuo Emetsu, aka the man behind a lot of the iconic Final Fantasy songs. And with him at the helm of the soundtrack, I feel like it's got a pretty strong chance to be a good soundtrack. Mm -hmm. And for me, 
Another kicker is that Platinum Games have had a hand in its combat. And who better to work on your combat than Platinum Games? Mm -hmm. Because for me, you can't get better. I, I love Platinum, if, if you couldn't tell. Whether it's their current work or, or old work, I love it. But yeah, it's bright, it's colourful, it gives Xenoblade 2 vibes. Yeah. <laughs> immensely. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Well, we'll have to wait and find out. Next one on the list is Kirby. It's Kirby and the Forgotten Lands. Just like Bayonetta 3, not long been announced, but just like Pokemon Legends, it's changing up its formula. This is going to be an open world Kirby game. And to be honest, it's not a concept that I've really thought of, but it it sounds like it could work, especially from the trade uh, trailers if, in which we've seen. Yeah, I'm, lo I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, because from my knowledge, every, every Kirby game has been a side-scroller. And, and don't get me wrong, a lot of Kirby games are fantastic, like Returner to Dreamland, Triple Deluxe, and especially Kirby's Epic Yarn. But still though, it's by HAL, and what can I say? It's just a Kirby game that looks bright and colourful. Mm -hmm. I'm not ex I'm not expecting it to be super hard, but it's going to be like a fun time, and there's going to be co-op. So I say, bring it on. <laughs> Looking forward to it. It's going to be out spring of next year, and for me, it'll be a nice tie-over before we get to an another open world game, which we'll get to at some point in the, uh, this video. Uh, and I can't believe I'm saying this. I really can't believe I'm saying this. I never thought I'd say this again. I don't know how many times I can repeat this joke pretty much the same way that fans cannot help but go through the cycle over and over again. I kind of am looking forward to Son Sonic Frontiers. <laughs> Am I going through the same cycle? Am I relapsing from a drug? <laughs> I, I don't bloody know. Sonic Frontiers has the potential to be good. Mm -hmm. I need to emphasize this. Potential. It's a Sonic open world game. Mm -hmm. That is an advantage and disadvantage at the same time. Yeah. Because open world, you think, ooh, wow, vast envi environments for you to explore or and do. Keep in mind, this is Sonic. <laughs> who goes really, really quickly. Now, here's the thing. Here is the di dilemma. Either Sonic is going to go way too fast and you won't be able to explore everything I either that or they will create a massive massive world to compensate for that speed but leaving that at the open world very bare because it's so big you can't do a lot with it or they slow Sonic down to create a world fill, filled up with things but then Taking away sonic speed is like saying, well, guess what? You're gonna take alcohol out of beer. <laughs> it kind of defeats it kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm interested to see how they're gonna execute this. Yeah. Cause let's face it, Sonic Games, well, we all know how Sonic Games are gone. I don't need to say anything about that nature. Now, two things that I know have a positive in going in the game. It's main writer for the story. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that right now. He he writes the comics, doesn't he? He does, both in Archie and in its current state. It's That gives me a sense that it's no longer going to be a comedy-focused game because the writers of the old the, uh, the old Sonic games, they they were more of, of comedy writers. Mm -hmm. And you can definitely tell in the tone and whatnot, so eh, it goes without saying, it, was, it wasn't very good. And I stand by it. I didn't like Sonic Colors Remaster simply because of what I feel like is marketing. Uh, the pseudo marketing. But I'm not going to go into that. Let's just say it involves a voice actor. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Am I wrong? But I'm not going to go into conspiracies. I am just simply going to just say a little bit on there and that's me, me done. Now. One of the things in which they can do to really sell me on this. 
Brain Crush 40 back, you bastards. Yeah. You cannot have a Sonic game without it being Crush 40. You have made that mistake for over 12 years. Yeah, I want to be able to speed through an open world game with June Sonoy playing in the background. Uh -huh, it needs to be, because as far as I know, we haven't had a composer uh, being credited to work, uh, to work in this game. So hopefully June is back at the helm. I mean, for God's sake, we haven't had a Crush 40 focused... A focused soundtrack since, since, since Sonic and the Black Knight. That was back in 2008 or 2009. That's harrowing, man. You don't count generations? No, no, generations wasn't directed by June. Mm -hmm. He had credits in there for sure, but Crush 40 wa wasn't the mainstay in there. Mm -hmm. Which is because of a shame. But I digress. Sonic Force, you have the potential. To be good. <laughs> Much oh, like what? Sonic Forces. Just remembering what happened during a stream. Yeah. <laughs> to cut things short, we tried to play tried to play Sonic Force on PS4 spat it out. <laughs> so great! <laughs> good sign, a good sign of things to come. <laughs> The next game in which we are somewhat looking forward to is Star Ocean, The Divine Force. We don't know much about uh, this game yet, except it's made by the same guys, Tri-Ace, it's by the same uh, composer, Mo Moiti Sa Sakabura, which is a guy behind Kid Icarus um, uprising and many rock or orientated soundtracks that I enjoy, and that's besides the point. We me we mentioned how uh, Grand Blue Fantasy looked kind of like Xenoblade 2. This one definitely reeks of Xenoblade X vibes. <laughs> so, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? We don't know. The only thing I know is it cannot be any worse than Star Ocean integrity and unfaithfulness because I don't think I've ever played a more boring JRPG than that one. Yeah. <laughs> we got that game morbidly for cheap, thinking, you know what, it, can, it, it, it isn't bad. But my god, it was boring. It was so dull. Mm -hmm. And everybody else agrees with that as well. Which is kind of, it's, it makes me feel 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 better, because I thought it was just me. <laughs> but apparently, the name of the game was uh, was very accurate. It was very it was very unfaithful to Star Ocean from a lot of consensus from fans. No, I think it's faithfulness, not unfaithfulness. It's integrity. Actually, no, wait. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. I'm looking it up. <laughs> I swear to God, it is integrity and unfaithfulness. Ha ha ha! I'm right. Faithlessness. Faithlessness. Fine. Okay, fine. Then. Faithlessness. It still means the same thing. It's just when you looked up the the Star Ocean, the new one, faithfulness popped up. In the Google. Well, it says unfaithfulness. I win. Faithlessness. <laughs> In short, I can't spell. And two, it was very accurate. It was very unfaithful and it sucked. Oh, <laughs> hopefully Star Ocean Divine Force has has a chance to right that wrong. We don't know when it's coming out. We don't know anything about, about the game except for the composer and the trailer. But apart from that... Hey, we don't know. Could be good, could be bad, could be something we're interested in. May maybe not. Who knows? Let we'll us have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Next one up is another one of the indie variety, and that, my friends, is Stray. We have waited for this game for quite some time. It has been in a development since. Wow. Wow. Only 2020. Well, goddamn. Mm <laughs> hmm. But yet, this is a cat game, a cat, a cat platformer, and you know what? I'm looking forward to it. it. Looks charming, looks intriguing, and it's a cat. I love cats. Yeah. I'm easy. I'm easily pleased. Yeah. Show me a cat RPG, and I am all in on that business. <laughs> Short, simple, simplistic. Could be good. Could be bad. Hey, you know what? I, I'm very happy to give it a try, simply because I want to support cats in game. Yeah. Cats in game. Get I want to play as a cat. I want to scratch on the furniture like you saw. <laughs> <sighs> We're easy, we are. <laughs> anyway, We're cat lovers. <laughs> yes. Cats in game. 
<laughs> hey, shit, get that hashtag turned. Cats in game. <laughs> Put cat in game. But I wonder if you can pet that cat. <laughs> you you can't pet yourself, but I bet I bet someone can pet the cat. <laughs> and finally, what do you expect? It is the sequel to The Breath of the Wild. Because what else could it be? It was the game that kicked off our YouTube channel. It's very special to our hearts. It was, for me, one of the first times I went on at the internet in like voice format. And it was Alice's first time playing a Zelda game in full. Yeah, and true to the nature, we're gonna do a let's play on it. Yeah, because it is because I like I say it's tradition. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so look forward to that because we sure are. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the game's about of then it ish it exists, but hey, what do you expect? It's fun. I look forward to it. Me too. Now that the games that we all look uh, look forward to are over the segment, the segment's over words great good um let us talk about the future of our channel and what's been going on for the past few months because oh boy we've got a lot to unpack here but we'll try and keep it brief and concise and mm, mm, as little as personal as possible mm -hmm. so for the past couple of months things have been well stressful i want to say since august give or take yeah so August is when we went on a particular hiatus, a bit of a trip for two weeks. Since then, I seem to get the jewels got changed. Gone were the times in which we were staying up till four o'clock in the morning, and we decided that it would be beneficial to us in the long run if we stuck to that sleep sleep schedule that we changed to. Mm-hmm healthier and it was kind of better for our mental health to kind of, uh, kind of get back to normality almost so that made things a little bit difficult in terms of like uh, coming home from work and then having enough energy to do a long-term stream mm -hmm. so that's awkward in of itself plus our line of work isn't as it isn't as straightforward our days change, our shifts change, and sometimes they can be very, very long. Almost working, like, what, 13 hours a day? Yeah. Yeah. If not, sometimes longer. So, after that, you're kind of bushed, and you really don't want to do do that, almost. Um, as well as, during uh, the past couple of months, things have been, well... We have been working on for some uh, something in the background regarding uh, regarding my wife. Um, do you want to go into a little bit of detail because this this involves you? So uh, you can take this one if you want. Well, how much do I say? Because it's quite a big thing. I mean, say as much as you want. I mean, I mean, I can only add on to what you're doing because you're involved. Mm-hmm. Well, basically, if you couldn't tell. My husband's British. Chip, chip, cheerio, and all that jazz. And I'm American, and I'm living in the UK, which means I'm having to go through a five-year-long process of moving here. It's a visa, and last month we just... We, we did the last stage of the visa, and it hurt financially. <laughs> Yeah, very yeah, yeah, very much so. And right now we're just waiting for the results. They're going to take quite a while, but it's stressful and it's been on our minds. Yeah, to cut things short, it's been expensive, so we've had to work a lot more and they and AK AK being a lot a lot more tired and just not having a lot a lot of time to do it. And plus, we're, with us being stressed and worried about the visa and the timing and the finan uh, and the financial si uh, situation, just making sure we have everything we need, it, do it doesn't really put us in a positive mindset to either to, d uh, to definitely do a long-term YouTube project. I think what also didn't help is that I've recently become a lot more in touch with my art. I've been more in the art mood, so I've been drawing more, and drawing is a time sink, so I haven't really been able to get any editing in. Where can people find this art of yours? Well, I don't want to plug 
my art because that's just arrogant. What are we doing? We're plugging what we're doing in the future and what we've done. I don't think you can get a more pluggy video. <laughs> the only way this could be even more of a plug a pluggy video is if we said this video is sponsored by Ray Shadow Legends. <laughs> but of course we're not, so this is a good time as plug as anything. Well Raycon, good headphones by the way. Oh my god. <laughs> we're not sponsored by Raycons. Come on, why not? Well, if you insist, I'm pretty much on almost every social media platform except for TikTok. Under what uh, username? Alice Xenoblader, or Alice the Xenoblader, depends on how, on the character length of the username. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm, I'd like my Twitter to grow because I'm struggling the most with Twitter. Link in the description and, and video. <laughs> so yeah, I, I draw Xenoblade art, so if you want to see that or not, that's okay too. Mm hmm Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and, and and the only times in which we've been able to re really free up content without without dedicating so much time into into um, a video is just doing a simple a simple demo stream. Yeah. That's been like a quick and easy bit of content, and it just gives us time to relax and just I don't know de-stress and talk to people because. In this current climate, as well as well as being pressed for time, talking to people is just really nice to do. It is. Now, um, I guess that's as much detail as we can go in, but for now, let's go into the final point. And for those who have watched our channel and have somewhat been paying attention to the past couple of months, you might be no you might have noticed how we haven't discussed anything about fire emblem free houses yet <laughs> that brings us to the biggest issue and the biggest thing going forward and this is probably in some way our our fault because of how we've been doing this but to cut uh, to cut things brief we uh, how do i say this without, without sounding overly negative I really enjoy playing Fire Emblem, like Free Houses and Fire Emblem games in general. Mm -hmm. But I think what can happen is if you play games back to back, or play the same, especially playing, especially saying the, the same the same game back to back, it can get tiresome, and it can not it cannot get boring, but it definitely proves hard to make engaging content. I think what I can describe it as like Persona 5 Royal, how how we didn't know we had to max out certain confidants and we had to go back through whole game again just to get those confidants to unlock the actual ending. Yeah. And for me, with the route we chose, you know in our current let's play we chose to go against Edelgard. And for the most part, it's just relaying the same maps with the same game, with the same characters and the same story. Now, granted, this is probably the only time it's going to happen, to this extent at least, because of the route we chose and the way we're choosing to do this content. And what makes it worse is that one of the next coming episodes in which we ha have left, because to put things into perspective, we have like what? Over 10 episodes pre-recorded. Yeah. Give or take. So we have them ready to go. But the thing is, with time being an issue, and also with one of the near episodes coming up, for the first time in our channel's history, we lost both mine and Alice's audio. There have been a few spots here and there where we've lost my audio, a spot where, you know, Alice has lost her audio. But we've had something to fall fall back on. Mm -hmm. One of these particular episodes, we have just lost complete audio. We just have to go through the, and we just have nothing to go uh, to go on. And apart from my art, that's another reason why I haven't edited it because I'm dreading that episode. The only thing I can do is I need to find time to go and watch that episode back. And for the first time on the channel, we do post commentary on it. But I know I should get back into editing anyway because our premiere subscription is not being used and I'd like to get it. I'd like the money to be used for something. <laughs> I can understand that. 
But yeah, so what we're going to be doing going forward is we are going to, I think, brute force this one particular playthrough for Let's Play for YouTube. And then maybe for the other two, we simply just stream it and then upload highlights. Mm hmm. Because don't get me wrong. I still stand by what I said when we still did our Blue Lions Let's Play. I love the game. It's enjoyable. It's got great characters, got a great story, but you can only play a story so many times before it loses its effect. And don't get me wrong, it is it is a detriment to Fire Emblem Free Houses, and I do I do feel like it should have had a bit more variety in its story. But still, that's that's nitpicking the grand scheme of things. So if you're worried about or wondered where Free Houses have gone to, it's simply due to time, stress. And just <sighs> an awkward time. Mm -hmm. But the ser a series is, is not going to be dead. We we want to go back to it. And Lightless Plays isn't dead. No, no, no. And if you are watching this video and you stayed on for this long, to all a hun for 150 plus people who are still subscribed and watch us. Whether you are a passerby, whether you are a long-time fan, or just looking at this and going, what the hell's this? <laughs> Either way, thank you guys for staying with, staying with us for this long, for this crazy couple of years. Honestly, I said this before on Twitch, and I'll say it again on YouTube. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We make these videos because it's fun, and just seeing people like our stuff and hopefully you guys enjoy some stuff then you know what that's all I could possibly ask for yeah thank you for your patience <laughs> yeah. it's like hey it's like hey we we do stuff on internet and people like it <laughs> cool awesome and now keep in mind we aren't the wacky youtubers or anything like that but still thank you but I will extend this question, if it, and if anyone wants to answer it or give their two cents, then please, please do. What content would you like to see from us? In terms of like, would you want us, would you want us to do a let's play on this one particular game? Would you want us to do more Twitch content as opposed to YouTube or vice versa? Would you want us to branch out and do more content, like say, I don't know, traditional top tens or? reaction videos or anything like that just to just to just reaching out there and just seeing what you guys think and what you would be interested in because yeah because we still have a lot of xenoblade essay videos we want to do as well we we do so many things in the pipeline <laughs> i feel like one of these days i want to do a xenoblade review with you <laughs> where whether it's one two definitive edition We'll see. But, uh, yeah, I think that's everything that I want to say about this video. Have you got anything else you want to say? No. Do you feel like we've covered everything in nearly 50 goddamn minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. We like to ramble, <laughs> I suppose. Well, either way. Well, we had a lot to talk about because we've been gone for so long. True. And again, guys, thank you, thank you so much for your, for your patience. We appreciate every single one, one of you guys, and thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Seriously, you're awesome. Mm -hmm. Whether you watch for a minute, ten minutes, or anything else, your time is appreciated. So, on that note of you guys being awesome, I feel like I, I feel that's a good time to end. Right? Mm -hmm. So, that said, guys, we will see you on YouTube in the next year, where hopefully things can get started again and things can get back on track, and maybe we'll go on to new heights next year. And maybe we'll get more announcement of new games. Maybe. And if so, you know where, you know where we'll be. On the internet and being silly. <laughs> as if we're as if as if we're gonna be anything else. So closing out the video, 
Thank you guys so, so much for your time. See you next year. Have happy holidays, happy new year, and stay safe in amongst this global chaos and nonsense. I have been Lightning. I'm Alice. And this is being Lightless, saying happy new year, bring on 2022, and we'll see you all next time. I'm not looking forward to Elden Ring. Bye.